hi everyone in this video you are going to learn about what are the various issues that we encounter when we are using dynamic cmos design in the previous videos i have explained what are the differences between static cmos design and dynamic cmos design static cmos design uh, if you say there are two types of cmos designs static cmos circuit design and dynamic cmos circuit design so if you see in the static cmos circuit design we have explained um, that the inputs are constant forever until the user intentionally changes whereas in the dynamic cmos design the input consisting of clock signal where it continuously changes with respect to time that means dynamic input is we are giving but whereas in the static input we are not giving any dynamic input we are giving a static inputs constant inputs okay so now in the dynamic CMOS design, we have seen a clock signal is applied in the PMOS transistor and a, the same clock signal is applied for the NMOS transistor. One is, um, that means when clock signal is zero, PMOS transistor comes into on state and again in the dynamic CMOS logic design, there are two types of operations or modes that the dynamic CMOS works. One is pre-charge mode. First one is pre-charge mode and second one is evaluation mode. In the pre-charge mode, the output or load capacitance is charged until VDD. Whereas in the evaluation phase, the capacitor where it has charged in the previous case, now it will discharge. It will discharge through the on largest of the pull down network. Okay. Now some problems are associated with this type of pre-charge and evaluation because when we are going for the pre-charge phase, we, until and unless we give clock signal, we change the clock signal, the capacitor is completely charged and waited for the discharging duration. Okay, suppose in I am explaining one case where the capacitor is charged, CL is completely charged to VDD. Now, static input for the pull down network is not making pdn2 on then the capacitor cl will never be discharged hope you understand what is the reason okay so cl is previously charged as PMOS transistor is in on state and now VDD is the voltage across CL. Now during discharging period, the pull down network has to come into on state to make the pull down network on. But pull down network is not in on state until the static input changes. That is a situation may occur where the capacitor will not discharge from their VDD. Okay, so that is the issue. So likewise we are having, I am going to address the three um what is that um, issues so those are issues in dynamic cmos issues in dynamic cmos first one charge leakage charge leakage Second, charge sharing, charge leakage, charge sharing, and third one, capacitive coupling. Capacitive coupling. So now, now let us go through one by one individually. See here, this is the first issue. I am going to address as charge leakage. Charge leakage. So in charge leakage, see here, what I tell in the previous case. See, assume that a case where clock is equal to zero. Understand clearly, listen clearly. 
assume a situation where clock is equal to 0. Clock is equal to 0 and here it is also 0. When clock is equal to 0, what happens? The PMOS transistor that is nothing but MP transistor comes into on state and ME evaluation transistor comes into off state. So the PMOS transistor MP as it is on state, the VDD is having a current flow from VDD to this capacitor CL. So the charging period will be like this. Then capacitor charges. See here, this is the voltage across capacitor that is shown. CL, voltage across CL, so VCL. Now, as the clock signal is in the zero stage, the capacitor charges. This is the charging duration of the capacitor. Hope you understand now. Now, what happens here? The clock signal is changed to 1 as it is a dynamic signal. It continuously changes from 1 to 0 and as well as 0 to 1. But when the clock signal is changed, the input for the transistor M1, which is an NMOS transistor, is not changed. It is a static input. It is a static input. Static input will change only in the presence of user. Only user needs to change. Suppose if he does not change and A is equal to 0 forever, then whatever the charge accumulated across the capacitor will stay like that. VDD. Okay. But capacitor is nothing but a battery. When it is charged and left in open condition, then the charge leakage will occur. Slowly, the capacitor voltage will discharge towards 0 towards 0. Again what we are doing again for the next clock cycle when 0 comes again whatever the charge discharge across the capacitor if it is not equal to VDD again capacitor charges up to VDD. So this process will repeat this process will repeat until the M1 transistor comes into on state. If M1 transistor is in off state this is the process that will end up occur. Okay. See here, this is the pre-charged phase where the capacitor is charging in clock 0 phase and this is the discharging phase. Actually, discharging phase is known as evaluation phase. This evaluation phase will ha uh, has to occur when the NMOS transistor comes into on state. Nothing but pull-down transistor comes into on state. But this evaluation phase occurs here due to the leakage. That's why here it, the problem is known as charge leakage okay so charge leakage <coughs> i will write here whatever i have discussed when clock is equal to 0 cl charges when clock is equal to 0 cl charges when clock is equal to 1 and Input A is equal to 0. Input A is nothing but input to the transistor M1. See here. Input to the transistor M1. And clock is equal to 1. A is equal to 0. In this condition, CL has no discharging path. Has no discharging path. But what happens? Though the voltage across CL discharges nothing but leakage occurs leakage occurs ok this is what the charge discharging again when CL equal to 0 the capacitor CL sorry what is this the clock is equal to 0 the CL charges okay this process will repeat this process will repeat until A becomes 1 okay so this is the problem which is known as charge leakage now let us go through the second problem that is charge sharing 
charge sharing charge sharing what do you mean by charge sharing suppose here there are three capacitors we are having one is the load capacitor cl which is the actual output load capacitor and two more capacitors are there which are considered to be internal capacitors so ca and cb ca is the capacitor across the transistor mb and cb is the capacitor across the transistor mb evaluation transistor now assume a condition initially clock is equal to zero initially clock is equal to zero i will write here when clock is equal to zero what happens cl charges nothing but pre charging phase occurs cl charges this is called as pre charging phase only two operations are there one is pre charge phase another one is the evaluation phase pre charge phase is nothing but capacitor charging phase evaluation phase is nothing but discharging phase now as we have assumed that the capacitor uh, the clock is equal to zero and this clock is equal to zero so the mp transistor comes into on state and the capacitor charges as it is having a current path from there to here okay now assume another condition when clock is equal to 1 when clock is equal to 1 means the transistor mp comes into here for this condition mp on me on sorry me off so capacitor charges and in this case we are taking mp is equal to off and me is equal to on it is off state so there is no connection from vdd to output or capacitor so there is no question of charging and now coming to this bottom case me now it is in on state so if it is a single transistor alone in the entire pull down network then it makes the capacitor to discharge but what happens if this is on but see here there are there are two transistors in the pull down network both are in series okay to make the capacitor to discharge however the bottom transistor me is in on state and in the mea transistor is also on state because it is varying from 0 to 1 but what about the transistor mb mb is in off state because it is applied with a static input nothing but zero hope you understand now what is the problem that we are having with the dynamic cmos logic circuit with static inputs though clock signals are a dynamic signals the inputs that are having with the pull down networks are static okay so in order to capacitor discharge the both of the transistors MA MB must be having logic one as input and they must be uh, allowing a path for the capacitor to discharge but in this condition what happens one is having a logic high voltage so that it on but another one MB is having a, an input zero that makes the transistor to off see here now along with these two the transistor MA is on mb is off it is ma is on because a is equal to 1 and mb is equal to off because b is equal to 0 what is the path now what is the capacitor path now now see this transistor is in on state capacitor has to discharge i will draw it in red color see here capacitor discharges from the capacitor cl current passes in this direction until it comes here as yeah, this transistor ma transistor is in on state until this point it reaches now where the capacitors current will flow as the transistor mb is in off state it will not go in this direction and it is having some capacitor so this capacitor will now take the current flow see the capacitor previously charged capacitor cl which is charged up to vdd is now discharging the path because of this path another transistor uh, capacitor ca is benefited by this current so ca ca now it is charging and here it is discharging 
this is what charge sharing okay so as one transistor loses the current and another transistor gains the current so the capacitor ultimately the capacitor ca charges ca charges this is what this means the charge from cl to ca is being is being shared okay charge from one capacitor to another capacitor is sharing now coming to the third case where the capacitor coupling is there capacitor coupling so the high impedance of the output node makes the circuit very sensitive to crosstalk effects okay till now we have discussed the problem where the input one of the inputs has a static input but now in order to avoid a crosstalk from one stage to another stage you see here our operation is completely now not focusing on the static inputs now it is completely on the coupling this is the third case is known as capacitor coupling capacitor coupling see in capacitor coupling what do we have to use the output of first transistor stage the output of first dynamic stage is connected to number of other stages because of the high input impedance of other following circuits the output may degrade so in order to avoid that capacitor couplings must be preferred cl1 is acting as a capacitor coupling which provides a high input impedance at the output as well as that delivers the power equally uh, from first stage to the second stage okay uh, i will write here the high impedance of the high impedance of the output node makes the circuit very sensitive makes the circuit very sensitive to crosstalk effects so the wire routed over a dynamic node may capacitor couple capacitively and destroy the state of the floating node so another equally important from the capacitor coupling is the back case coupling back case coupling is not about this one okay here we are using another two capacitors from here to here is it here back case capacitor so a further causes of the output this further causes the output of the static nand gate not to drop the all the way down to zero because of this capacitors what we have added the output completely will not go to zero because it makes some threshold voltage if the voltage drop is large enough then the circuit can evaluate incorrectly and the nand output can go low okay so when we are using a capacitor coupling from first stage to second stage the along with this capacitor we have to use few other capacitors also in this direction as shown here and here also we are using a circuit see what is this, this is nothing but a nand gate this is nothing but a nand gate operation nand gate operation now it is driven by a dynamic cmos logic circuit this particular problem occurs when the dynamic cmos logic circuit is driving other cmos logic circuitry okay then capacitor couplings must be preferred okay this is about the issues addressed in the dynamic cmos logic design